I'm Frankie Strand. I'm an artist from London. Frankie, um, good to see you. I've seen your work, you know, all over the place, literally all over. Um, you know, uh, only the other day I think I was on the canal and I saw your pink flamingos and a, and a lizard of some sort. Tell me about your style, your particular style. Um, I guess my style uh, has been described by others quite succinctly as like colourful, vibrant, uh, something I call the uplifting, which I thought was a really nice way to put it. Um, it's, I guess, mostly drawn from nature. Like my fascination with reptiles comes from like a real appreciation of their skin. I love scale textures. Um, so like snake skin, crocodile skin is just like so aesthetically pleasing to me. Um, and I like bright colours, I like putting bright colours in the streets, I think it's nice and eye-catching and, yeah, like uplifting, it's nice to see some bright pink against like a grey wall. Um, so, yeah, mostly just a love of like nature and colour. And what about the places that you, you paint? Because obviously I see your, your, your work in a lot of sort of abandoned places, obviously on the canals and the towpaths and things like that. Where do you, how, how, what is it about the, the, the locations that you choose? I guess sort of not getting in trouble is one thing. Like if you go along the canal, you're unlikely to be bothered by anybody. There's already quite a lot of graffiti, so it's not like you're painting over someone's brand new wall. Um, but I really enjoy abandoned places as well, just for the I don't know, like the feeling like you found something hidden and I don't know, it's very private. You're not going to be disturbed by anyone. Um, this is a real atmosphere. It's just, it, it just makes me want to paint being somewhere like that. It has so much character already. That's one thing I love about painting walls as well. It's like the surface already defines a character to the piece slightly. Like it will sort of, you know, if you've got a really like cracked, crusty, old wallpaper wall in an abandoned house, it's like it's something to work with and around rather than just like a blank canvas. I can't paint the canvases because they're just too. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your journey into street art then, because um, I think what you've been in London three years or so now, and and obviously you, you've been quite prolific in that time. But you weren't always a street artist, were you? No, well, I studied illustration and graphic design, um, and I've always enjoyed looking at street art online. And gradually, I just sort of figured I I can just do it if I just believed I could and started painting. So I taught myself to spray paint because it seemed like the most obvious medium. Um, started going along the canals because I knew it would be, like, you know, no trouble to paint there. Nice, quiet place to <laughs> practice my craft. Um, and, yeah, just being in London, it really, like, immersed me in the scene. I started meeting people as soon as I started going around painting a bit more. And once I met one person, they introduced me to a bigger circle, um, did drips and runs with seeds. That was, yeah, nearly three years ago now. So through him, I met some more friends, and yeah, this, this, everyone's quite like welcoming. Once I made friends with people, I just started painting all the time, having lots of people to go out with. And and I suppose that's partly because I, I see like you do a lot of collaborations. Is that is that because you like working with all these different people? You like learning from all yeah, these people? yeah, definitely. I love uh, <coughs> I love like adapting around someone else's work and seeing like what they can offer you and what you can offer them, what you can learn from one another. It's also just nice to have someone working beside you. It can be quite solitary. So I freelance and I live on my own. So to paint with someone else is, is just nice than like spending rather than spending the day on your own. It's like having someone to dance ideas off and I, yeah, I just think it really helps push you. And that learning, um, you know, from others, I suppose that's important as well, considering where you've sort of come from from that illustration background and trying to find your way in the street out well what, what sort of things do you learn from others when you paint with them um well it, it, it depends on the people's style really like from from real deal who i've painted with a few times like his style uh, like using key lines the way he does fades how he will like he sort of suggested how i could paint the eye of the snake i was doing with him and from that it kind of made me think more about using that sort of technique and then i sort of started <coughs> using it in my own way and adapting it a bit but like Without that suggestion, I might not have ever thought to paint something like that. Um, so, it's, yeah, it's really good. And then from other people, like different thicknesses of line or different compositions. When I was working with ET1, I started, like, breaking up my characters a bit. So rather than being so solid, I did some flamingos that were kind of, like, cracking away with his sort of lines. 
<laughs> little hand <laughs> signals, yeah, with his lines kind of breaking up the piece. Uh, so it's just really interesting to see what it can encourage you to do. So you told us a bit earlier about you know the the, the um, you know the textures of the animals and the sort of you know the, uh, the reptiles that you like to to paint. But is there something more about sort of the um, an environmental bent to you, to your work? Is, is there a wider concern about? Yes, I mean, I don't feel like that comes into my work as much as I'd like to yet, but it's definitely a factor that I'm like taking on board, and I really hope I can use my work as a platform to encourage others to think about nature a bit more and appreciate it more. I'm not sure how much influence I have yet, but I would really like to start bringing more environmental concepts into my work. And, um, you know, in terms of your sort of um, the first time that we first met, I don't know if you remember, but it was, it was probably when you first started then, if you came down around three years ago, it was at Fem, Fem Fierce. Fierce, yeah, 20, <laughs> was it 2015, maybe? Yeah, 2015, we I can't are, believe it. 2018. How about that? Okay. Um, tell me about your work since then. So you've come down, you, you did something at Fem Fierce. How has it developed? How has it advanced since we first met? It's funny looking back because I remember being like really pleased with myself on the day from this and standing back from the piece and being like, yeah. And looking back now, I like cringe seeing pictures of it because it's like, oh, my style's just developed. I have a better understanding of like crocodile anatomy and how I like them to look. And it just seems like a really like childish scribble looking back on that. But um, I guess that's the beauty of it. It's nice to see that I have progressed and also thinking if I've come that far in two, three years, like. Hopefully, I'll still be painting in five years, and who knows how much better it can be then if I keep it up. And 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 how do you see your um your your progression sort of during during the next phase of your sort of street art career? If you That's like. a good question. Style-wise, I can say I guess I think I need to think more about backgrounds because a lot of my stuff is quite like standalone, and maybe I'm slightly lazy, and that collaborations often help like <laughs> give a bit of a background to my piece. A lot of people I work with kind of are good for like adding that so maybe that's slightly lazy of me I definitely want to look more into like backgrounds I want to do some more like plant based uh, paintings and just think about concepts a bit more bring in the environmental stuff um, I'm going to hopefully like have quite a bit of time to think whilst I'm away in Sri Lanka soon so I think I will sort of mull over ways I want to convey a message within my work and that's going to be an interesting trip, isn't it? The Sri, Sri Lanka one. It's going to be uh, what six weeks or something. You're going there. Six weeks, maybe longer. <coughs> see how I feel once I'm there. Um, I plan to work with some wildlife charities and do a bit of surfing and stay in some hostels. Hopefully, like get my art to sustain me a little bit out there. Um, hope to meet other artists as well. That'd be nice. And of course, find out about more the you know the um, the wildlife of. Sri Lanka and the sort of creatures that you might come across there. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be talking to um, a couple of charities that do conservation work. So uh, one sort of deals with human elephant conflict and um, protection of game in national parks. Uh, so I plan to shadow their work, see the kind of things they're putting in place to protect these animals, and then seeing what I can do as an artist with a platform in London to kind of raise awareness for them to do a fundraising exhibition and channel some money back to them um, and then uh, yeah some work with our anti-plastic charities um, climate change charity this one called EFL um, oh there's like a long list of things oh, so much, do. isn't there? just have to keep an eye on that you know absolutely will keep an eye on that <laughs> no I think that's, that's, that's really interesting Frankie um, thanks very much for talking to us